Hi, I'm Jane. Welcome to Art Talk 14. I think I've always known that art wasn't going to be just a hobby for me, but because of the way being an artist is perceived in this world, I was too afraid to admit to myself and to others that I knew art was a thing I was going to do with my life. This year, being at ESA and being told my art is making a difference in the world, as well as seeing grads out in the world succeeding, having their work sold in galleries, attending their dream schools on full scholarships, and having this huge family around the world supporting them, I realized that I could do it. I recognize that being able to take this risk in life is a privilege, and I know that because of this, it is my job as a person to try. I don't think I will ever understand why those who have the opportunity to don't do what they love to do. How these people work nine to five jobs they hate and live lives they don't recognize. Do they not understand that we only get one chance? When did money become more important than happiness? Why are people so willing to sacrifice their dreams for money? Is that bigger house really worth it? I know that nothing is gonna stop me from these goals I have. I know the chances of failure could be high, but I also know if I don't try, I will never forgive myself. This is one of the first paintings I made this year, inspired by ESA graduate Ella Weber. Ella was in grade 12 when I was in grade 9, and I really looked up to her. Seeing the quality and skill of the work she was making made me realize how much was possible in the art world. I think that each year the younger grades feed off the work the older grades make, and not only did Ella's art inspire me, but her ambition and hard work is something I strive for as an artist and as a person. This painting is part of the long process of me trying to find my style, and Ella Weber's art, as well as the other grade 12s and graduates, have helped so much with that process. I then made this painting titled Empty Highway. Around mid-April, during the first lockdown, I went running through my neighborhood, and this was the first time I'd really left my house since the first lockdown. As I was running, I came across this bridge I'd seen so many times before. It was rush hour, and I looked out at this, and for the first time, the highway I was so used to seeing packed with cars was empty. The world had stopped. At this moment, I realized the severity of this pandemic. It had made the world stop. This painting was made to let people know that they are not alone right now and that everything they are feeling is real and that it's valid. What I found was most successful about this painting was the reaction I got from other people. As I explained this moment in scary realization, I had multiple people tell me that they had that moment too. To hear that a painting I made resonated with people had changed the purpose and goal that my art has. Although I feel that this painting was successful that way, it was extremely stressful to make. This painting, as well as my previous paintings, had been draining this passion and love that I had for art. I felt really lost and overwhelmed. Half of grade 10 had already gone by and I felt that each day was just slipping through my fingertips. I was then asked what I want the purpose of my art to be, and it was to create an experience. I then went back to remember when I had had an experience because of art. The first example I could remember was when I saw this painting by Jackson Pollock. I was only 10 years old, but I remember being so clearly overwhelmed, yet at peace. It was the first time I realized the potential and purpose that art has, and a print of this painting now hangs over my bed. The next experience I remember having is seeing Monet's water lilies in New York. They took up an entire room, and these paintings again created an experience, which is now a memory I think I'll have forever. The third example that came to mind right away was Vivian Tran at Portfolio Day 10. The way she used not only her art, but the space her art was occupying to create an experience is now a goal I have with my own art. From the way her paintings hung to the TVs and the use of light, Vivian created a world I could transport to. As I was still lost with my own art, I tried to figure out how all this work is so different, but does the same thing. How does it create an experience? I thought possibly about scale or maybe use of space, but I realized I was wrong. The answer is how the art was made. 
Everything then became clear. All the art I'm so inspired by creates an experience because of the way that it is made. One of my interpretations of Luca Soldeveri's work is that the art itself isn't the final product, but it is a process. Stella Woods, another artist and ESA graduate I am so inspired by, I believe does the same thing. The art is not just the graphs, but it's the conversations she has with people. I was kind of mad at myself for not getting it before. The process is why we can connect personally and have empathy. What makes a song good is what the artist was feeling when they made it. What transports you to another world when reading a book is the world the author was in when writing the book. The answer is the process. I now made this painting titled Breakthrough. i had been told the entire year by the people I trust most that this painting was something I needed to make. And of course, they were right. But I was so hesitant to make this painting. I felt that if I gave art everything and I wasn't successful, that I would have nothing. I put so much pressure on myself to make art that was really meaningful, and I think that was because I didn't think I was good enough to be here. I felt like I had wasted so much time in grade 9, and that now there wasn't enough time to get to where I needed to be. It never felt real that I got to be here, and my biggest fear was wasting this chance I'd been given. I had everything I needed, but what, what was holding me back was myself. I was then reminded that even if I were to never make art again, I would still have people, that I will still be a part of something. I am more than my art. So in making this painting for the first time, art wasn't about the end result, it was about the process. When making this painting, I was letting go of stress and anger by painting in a very physical way. Before, I'd used art as an escape, but now during this process of letting go, I was using art as a tool. This is the first time that I made something I truly felt was art. Breakthrough allowed me to let go of the subconscious perceptions I had regarding what makes art good. I see this painting as having many purposes. In some ways, it's a self-portrait. It stores memories and feelings that I've had since I was born. I also see it as a collection of history. I believe that every action that has impacted generations of family and friends in some way, big or small, has made me the person I am today. Because of this painting and the acceptance from my ESA community, I was able to take the pressures I'd put on myself to make really meaningful work and make the work I truly needed to make. I then made eight paintings in just over six weeks, and they weren't all about something, but that was okay. This painting titled Jellyfish was just about escaping from the overwhelming amount of schoolwork by focusing on little details and blending colors. It allowed me to escape from the anxiety of school and this pandemic. I also made this painting, but it was really unsuccessful because I was trying to mimic what I felt when making my breakthrough painting, but the key difference is I felt something different when making this one. So this painting isn't honest. But besides all the paint that I used, very sorry about that, making an unsuccessful painting was okay. I then made this painting titled Waterfall. Really, it's just an experiment. It explores a combination of realism and abstract art, as well as art as a tool versus art as an escape. I then just painted this again, but really big. And making this big one was one of the most fun experiences I've had when making art. I would assume this is because it was the only painting I made this year in school surrounded by the people who pushed me to make my best work. I then made this painting, which was another experiment it explores and combines many different textures and styles of abstract painting. I then made these two portraits, and portraits have been something I was very afraid to do again. I feel my previous portraits have been very unsuccessful because of the amount of pressure I'd put on myself. These were very different, they felt easy. The extreme stress I'd felt previously when painting didn't exist when making these. My favorite thing in the world is when I'm painting and I love what I'm doing. I'd only felt this pure bliss feeling when making art during my breakthrough painting. And I was 
very afraid that it wouldn't translate when I did re-listen. But I think because these people are un unknown to me, there was no pressure. Confidence in my art is something I've lacked this year. In the first half of the year, I'd put my paintings face down on the floor and completely panic when I had to show them to people. But these last two paintings, I was excited to show them to the ESA community because I know I will always be accepted by them. After schools closed for the third time this year, and I realized I wasn't going to get to my last art class of grade 10, I made this painting titled Floating. This represents how the pandemic feels to me. In a few months, I'll be in grade 11, and I have not yet experienced a normal year of high school. For me, what has been the hardest thing during this time is the loss of control. The constant anxiety of not knowing what's going to happen. I just want to be able to hug my grandparents again and see my friends on my 16th birthday. These clouds also represent the guilt I feel. I know I have it so much better than so many others, but this anxiety is with me all the time. I'm floating. Now the goal of my art had changed again. I wanted my work to produce a feeling. I was deciding what that feeling should be, so I focused on what I needed most at that time. Because of this pandemic we're living through, I've lost the feeling of safety, and I was asked the question that despite everything, what makes me feel safe? And the answer was clear. It was the family-like community I have at ESA. So this next painting combines the confidence I've gained from my previous portraits as well as solves the problem that the cloud painting is addressing. I then made this painting of my best friend, Ava. Ava was the first person in our class to be truly vulnerable with us through her art. Because of her strength this year, even despite being covered by masks and six feet apart, I've grown closer to her and to the people in my class than I ever thought was possible. Because of her bravery, our class now has a family-like relationship. We support each other through everything, and we push each other to do our best work. I've never felt more at home than when I'm with her and my ESA family. This is the second painting in the series of my classmate and friend, Charlotte. At ESA, obviously you are supported, but you are also pushed to make your best work. When I bring a painting into school, I know my friends are going to be honest, and Charlotte is the best example of this. Because of her honesty, she has pushed me and my class to be the best we can. Although it can be hard to hear at times, to accomplish the goals I've set for myself, I know she is so needed. Thank you, Charlotte, for making me a better artist. This is the third in the series of my friend Olivia, another example of someone in our class whose vulnerability and kindness that unites and pushes our community to be even better. This is the fourth in the series of grade 12, Hannah. When I wrote the first draft of this art talk, I showed it to Hannah and to the grade 12s. Although at first it was absolutely terrifying, I'm so grateful I got to have that experience. Another very special thing about the ESA Contemporary Art Program is the relationships between the grades. The grade 12s didn't treat me like I was two years younger than them, they treated me like an equal. Hearing the encouragement from some of the people I am the most inspired by changed my life. Hannah is also one of the people who have put endless amounts of effort into making the first ever art con happen this year. Thank you. The next in the series is of artist, ESA graduate, and founder of Us Gallery, Nia Gao. In grade 9, I applied to be in Us Gallery's exhibition, Calculated Transparency. This was the first show I got accepted to. A big, a big part of my productiveness this year has been applying to shows and publications. I owe a lot of this to Nia, who showed me the endless possibilities and gave me another level of confidence in my work. I wanted my work to be complex, but I realized now it needed to be simple. By painting these people, art has created a feeling of safety and belonging I've always felt at my school, but now from my room in lockdown. I saw ESA for the first time at grade 8 day. I walked out of the gym through the narrow hallway covered by murals. I walked by the dancers in the dance studios as I heard the band kids playing under pressure from the auditorium. 
As I walked by the paintings on the walls and saw all these laughing people, the school didn't feel like a school. It felt like a home. I realized that I was home. Thank you to everyone who continuously reminds me that what I felt that day was real. Thank you for making me feel safe. I know that this feeling of safety and being at home started long before I stepped foot into ESA. One of the many things that makes this place I'm a part of so special is that I felt I was a part of it before I even auditioned. As a middle schooler feeling lost in the world, I spent large amounts of time realizing how special this place really was. I'd scroll through Instagram pages and see paintings bigger than I'd ever seen before. I would see videos of the students there making work until 9 o'clock at night. I saw ideas being perfectly executed that I never imagined were possible. But what amazed me, while shocking me the most, was seeing the love that everyone had for each other. I then made this painting the first. of artist, author, and ESICA grad, Lucas Solderberry. I remember first seeing Luca's art talk she made at my age, and I pictured myself up on that stage. And really, I began this art talk you're listening to now, then after seeing, hearing, reading, and experiencing the revolutionary work that Luca made. As I pictured myself up on that stage, it was not reality I saw, but just a dream I never thought could come true. And although technically I'm not on that stage, I'm gonna count it anyway. That day I wrote down a list of goals I had for myself. They were to be completed before I graduated high school. And number one was to write an art talk. I never thought this dream I had could come true or even be close to being completed, but now it has. Before I end, there are a few people I need to thank. I would not be here without you and I'm forever grateful that I have you in my life. Firstly, thank you, Ava, for being my person. Charlotte, George, Indira, Eamon, Olivia, and the rest of my grade 10 family for your bravery and patience with me. Your hard work and honesty pushes me to be a better person. Thank you for everything that you do and being the amazing people that you are. Thank you, Evelyn, Deza, and the grade 11s. Your kindness, ambition, and initiative has motivated my work so much. Next, I need to thank Hannah, Isabella, Abby, and the grade 12s for setting the bar higher than ever before. Thank you for having faith in me and the endless hours of work you put in to make ArtCon happen. You're my inspiration and I look up to you tremendously. When school shut down for the second time, I'd lost all motivation to make work, but seeing your art on Portfolio Day, despite losing so much time to a global pandemic, gave me the strength to start making art again. Without your perseverance, my art would not be where it is today. Thank you, Luca, for being my role model and inspiring me to write this art talk, as well as the ESA graduates whose quality and scale of work, art talks, bravery, and love you all have for each other that gave me so much excitement for my future and provided me with a feeling of safety, as well as made me feel I was a part of something even before I stepped foot into ESA. During my last art class this year, my very smart friend George was speaking about how stories never end, and that's how I see the community here. ESA CA grads whose time at ESA ended so long ago still play such an important and crucial role in my art making and in my life. So thank you to everyone who's gone through this program everyone currently here making it an even better place. And to the grades seven and eights who are thinking about joining our family, I promise you, this is where you need to be. Thank you, Mr. Lassard, for your kindness, dedication, and smiles you've brought into our lives. And lastly, there are two more people I need to thank. Where do I even begin? You have found a way to do even more despite a global pandemic. Thank you for the endless hours you've sacrificed. Thank you for not only changing our lives, but changing the world for the better. Thank you for the way you treat us, not as students, but as, as artists. And most importantly, I need to thank you for this place that you've built. 
You have built a place where each year we push boundaries and set bars even higher. You've built a place where regardless of race, sexuality, gender, and age, we all support each other. You have built a place where we can be our true selves, be brave, be honest, be safe, and truly love each other. I know that in two years, I'll be graduating and leaving this place. And although I'm terrified, I know that I will never truly be leaving the ESA community. I know that because of this place that you've built, I will have my ESA family here forever. So, to Mr. Novak and to Mr. Barry, thank you for building a home.